All right, so we are going to look at how to apply um, our knowledge of the normal distribution to application or real world type problems today. And that's our learning target. So um, here's an example of a problem that we could solve using the normal distribution techniques that we've learned so far, techniques and calculations. All right, so this problem is from our textbook, page 148, number one. It says, the time spent waiting for a prescription to be prepared at a chemist shop or pharmacy is normally distributed with a mean 15 minutes and standard deviation 2.8 minutes. Find the probability the waiting time is A, more than 20 minutes, B, less than 8 minutes, and C, between 10 and 18 minutes. So basically, any time I'm going to use the normal distribution, I need to ensure that my data is actually normally distributed. Um, you could tell that by kind of making a histogram or looking at data points, or in this case, it tells us in the problem that this is a normal distribution. So I'm going to call the time x is going to be time waiting in minutes. Okay, so I'm defining my variables. And we know that for this, our mu is 15 minutes, and our standard deviation is 2.8 minutes. Okay, so if I set this up, I'm going to say that I have x uh, such that my normal distribution has a mean of 15 minutes. And remember, this number here is the variance, not the standard distribution. So I'm just going to put 2.8 squared because that's what the variance is, the standard deviation squared. So let's go ahead and work on part A. This says more than 20 minutes. So. Basically, I need to find my z-score so that I can find the probability that x is greater than 20, right? This is what I'm trying to find, okay? So, that being said, I need to find the z-score relating to 20, okay? So, I'm going to say z is equal to 20, that's my x value, minus my mu, or mean, which is 15, divided by my standard deviation. When I do that, I get an answer of 1.786. And remember, we're running to three decimal places because this is what is on our um, normal distribution chart. Okay, so basically what I'm going to notice is that I'm going to go find my z-score on my normal distribution table, and I find that the probability, well, I'm going to find that the probability that x is um, not x, I'm sorry, the probability that my z-score, and remember we're always finding probability that it's less than 1.786 is 0 0.963. Okay, so that's the probability that z is less than 1.786, and this is the z-score associated with um, with a value of 20 in our in our distribution that we started with. Now here's the problem. We're looking when the time is greater than 20 minutes, not less than. So essentially we've standardized our 20 minutes to meet our um, normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. But the problem is we need to flip this sign. And so what we're going to need to do is once we flip that, we can say that the probability that z is greater than 1.786 happens when we say 1 minus 0 0.963, okay, because on our curve, here's what we're going to have, okay, oh, that's not too bad, okay, on a normal distribution, this is 0 or a mu, right, here's 1 standard deviation, here's 2 standard deviations, here's 3 standard deviations, pretend those are all symmetrical, about, you know, and we're going to have the same here. So pretend those are all evenly distributed. <laughs> okay, so basically when I have 1.786, I'm going to be like about here. Okay, so when I initially find my probability, what I'm finding is this part, right, to the left, because we're always going from the left. Okay, so probability start at 0 and work its their way up to 1. Okay, but really what I want to find is the part that's above a uh, z value of 1.786. So um, what I need to do 
and this is what we've done in the past for these types of problems, is we say 1 minus. So we're taking 1, our whole probability, and we're subtracting this white part away, and that leaves us with this green part. So we're going to say the probability that z is greater than 1.786 um, is equal to 1 minus 0.963 is equal to um, 0 0.037. So to kind of finalize that answer, we could say since our z-score and our x values represent the same value, we could say the probability that um, the times waiting is greater than 20 is 0 0.037. That's about 3.7% um, of the time. Not too bad. I would maybe go to this pharmacy. That sounds reasonable. Okay. Part B, we're going to approach the same way. It says, uh, what's the probability that we wait less than 8 minutes? So again, we have x such that our normal distribution is 15 minutes. 2.8 squared is our variance. So let's go ahead and calculate. Um, we're going to try to find when x is less than 8. Right? Okay, so let's find our z-score associated with the value um, of 8. So 8 minus 15 divided by 2.8. I am going to plug that into my calculator. Okay. And what you're going to notice is a negative number pops out. And that's because 8 is less than our standard deviation of 15. So we're going to have to be some standard deviations below. OK, so we're looking for a z value of negative 2.5. So basically, we could say the probability that z is less than negative 2.5 is equal to, all right, so our, our arrow is pointing in the right way because we always calculate less than our z value, but the change is that we have a negative value instead of a positive. So if you'll recall, we do the same idea that we did um, uh, that we did on the last problem, we always say 1 minus the probability of the positive value, the symmetric value. All right, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and look on my normal distribution table. And what I find is this is 0 0.09938. Let me just double check, but I'm not making that up. Okay, that's correct. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this calculation, 1 minus 0.9938, and I get, well, a very small probability. The probability that z is less than negative 2.5 is equal to 0 0.0062, okay? So wow, less than 0.6% of the time will we have a wait time less than 8 minutes. So I'm going to go up here and you know, the z value is directly correlated to x being less than 8, so the probability here is 0, oops, 0.0062. All right, not too bad. Now, we're going to do part c. So we're looking for a value, um, we're looking for the probability where the wait time is between 10 and 18 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up my z-scores for both of these. So 10 is below, uh, 10 is below the mean, or the mu. So I'm going to go ahead and end up, no, I'm going to end up with a negative number. And I get negative 0.2. Oops, that's not right. I typed this in wrong. That sounded a little too perfect to be true. Let me try this again. It's negative, or it's, yeah, it's negative 1.786. And remember, I'm rounding off here to this place because this is, we only go three decimal places up, okay, on our z table. All right. And I'm going to look at 18 minutes, which is greater than the mean. So I'm going to have a positive value here. And into my calculator that goes, and I end up with another lovely number of 1.071. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the probability that z is greater than, 
that p is, the probability that z is greater than negative 1.786, but less than 1.071. Okay, that's what we're looking for. If I draw a little normal distribution here, okay, that's kind of not very good, but here's our mean of zero. Okay, and basically, if we say this is negative one, and these are our standard deviations. Okay, pretend those are symmetrical. <laughs> 1.786 is a little greater than one, negative 1 and 3, or a little less than uh, negative 1 and 3, 4. So it's, we're going to say it's right here. About. This one's just barely over 1. What we're looking for is the probability that we're going to be um, having a wait time in this vicinity. Okay? So, and remembering we're going all the way out to 3 here. This is really actually quite a crummy drawing. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probabilities of each of these separately, and I'm going to start with the positive one. So it's the probability that z is less than 1.071. So I'm going to look on my normal distribution table and find 1.0, like we talked about in class. Then I'm going to go all the way over to the 7, and I'm at 0.8577. And then I need to go over to 1, and I'm going to add 2 ten thousandths. So this probability is 0 0.857, did I say, oh, 9, there we go. All right, and now I'm not actually going to um, look at my table because what you might recall is um, we did this in problem A. We had this number, uh, 1.786, it was the positive. But remember, when we have a negative value, we subtract the probability from 1. And that's actually what we did earlier. So we ended up with 0 0.0037. Yes, 0 0.037. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We have our upper, and we're going to subtract it from our lower. So the probability, OK, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say 0 0.8579 minus 0 0.037. Remember, this is like when we find the area underneath the curve. Um, we take our upper value, that's this one, and we subtract our lower value. In this case, our values are actually probabilities because we're finding the probability of this whole area here, and then we're finding the probability of this area here. And really, we're only interested in this, so we just find the difference. So that's not too bad. And we end up with a probability of 0 0.8209. So if we think about this in terms of does it make sense, um, the answer is actually yes, because we know that 95% of our data has to fall between negative 2 standard deviations below and 2 standard deviations above the mean. So 82% of our data is falling, you know, between negative 1.786 and positive 1.071. So that sounds reasonable to me. So that is 0 0.8209. But to answer this in the context of the problem, we would say the probability that our wait time is um, greater than 10 minutes but less than 18 minutes is 0 0.82. Or 82.09% of the time. Alright, so there is an application problem. 